Hey guys, Zachary Zane here, and today I'm gonna to be talking about anal fissures. While they are the worst, luckily they are very easy to prevent and treat. So in this video, you're gonna learn all about anal fissures. But first, I wanna share my uh, own personal experience with the first time that I actually got an anal fissure. Um, so I was with my boyfriend and we had this double date with this other couple and all four of us went back to play. I was not expecting to bottom <laughs> at this time and we all ended up hooking up and these two guys pulled down their pants and they were extremely well endowed. And at this point, I really hadn't bottomed that much in my entire life. So even though we used a ton of silicone lube, they just went a little bit too hard, a little bit too fast. And even though it was painful, I didn't say anything. Like I definitely should have, but I was kind of very new to all this. And maybe I was a little embarrassed. Obviously that has changed now. I would absolutely say something now if it was painful and he, if he was going too fast and hard, but I didn't then. Anyway, the sex was still good. But then when we finished, I went to the bathroom to clean up and I wiped and it was just all blood. And then the next day, it was just so painful, just like going to the bathroom. <laughs> and so I ended up having to see a doctor. He explained what anal fissures were. And yeah, that was my first experience getting them. All right, so now to the details of exactly what anal fissures are, how to treat them and how to prevent them. Um, for tips, I actually spoke to Dr. Evan Goldstein, who's the CEO of Bespoke Surgical, which is this um, premier elite anal surgery practice. So I just wanted to give him a shout out because a lot of these tips and a lot of the scientific information actually came from him. All right, so what exactly is an anal fissure? An anal fissure is a small tear in your skin that typically occurs around the anus or rim. The overlying skin or underlying muscle reaches its maximum capacity. So the skin actually splits and exposes a little bit of the underlying muscle underneath it. And this typically happens from anal play, anal sex, or defecating. Um, and it's actually quite common for people to get fissures. So how do you prevent anal fissures? So the first step is to start with appropriate dilation, meaning that you're loosening up your anus or your hole over time. You can't just go from taking nothing to something huge overnight. You need to actually stretch out your anus um, over the course of days or even weeks. And the best way to do this is through anal training kits or anal dilating kits. And these kits typically are just a bunch of butt plugs at different sizes, starting with a very, very teeny butt plug, and it slowly gets bigger and bigger. And what you do is you start with the smallest butt plug, you put a ton of lube on it, you insert it inside your anus, you let it sit there, then you take it back out, and you keep on doing this repeatedly over the course of a day or a few days until you reach the point where it can easily be um, inserted and then removed. And at that point, then you're ready to take the next dilator or the next butt plug in the kit. Sometimes we look at a large butt plug or a meaty penis and we think to ourselves, yes, I want all of that. I wanna take that, that looks amazing. I want my guts rearranged or whatever it is that you tell yourself. And that's all fine and dandy, but that has to happen in good time. You cannot rush these things. So start with a single finger. Once that finger gets all the way up inside you and you're easily taking it in and out and you have some wiggle room, then at that point you can add a, another finger, then maybe work your way up to a butt plug. And then at that point, you can finally start taking, you know, these bigger and girthier penises or butt plugs or whatever it is that you really wanna have inside of you. Another thing you need to be careful of is over douching. So if you are douching in the restroom before you're having anal play and you're in there for 45 minutes or an hour, you are doing too much. Um, the thing is when you over douche, you actually are more likely to um, get anal fissures. You're actually more likely to make a mess. Also, another thing with douching is when you put in the nozzle itself, make sure there is lube on it. If you put in this rough plastic nozzle, uh, 
that could also potentially cause you getting an anal fissure. So really you need to go slow and steady while using a ton of lube. And hopefully by now you are starting to see a theme here. <laughs> slow, steady lube. So lastly, you wanna steer clear of poppers. Poppers are slang for alkyl nitrites and they are a staple in the gay community. Poppers are an inhalant that you can buy over the counter at a sex shop or at many bodegas and they're often used to get a little bit of a head rush during sex and also to loosen up your anal muscles. Poppers work by relaxing the smooth muscles in your body, including your sphincter muscles, and often people take them and inhale them in order to uh, take bigger toys or in order to take uh, penises. If you're using poppers to mask or dull the pain, that means you're not ready to have any penis or dildo or butt plug inside of you, and you may end up getting an anal fissure without even knowing it. So if you can't take the penis or toy without poppers, then you definitely should not be taking it with poppers. So what do you do if you get an anal fissure? First things first, stop any form of anal play whatsoever. Do not keep having anal sex. Do not keep putting toys up your butt. You need to take a break from all things anal until this heals. And when in doubt, see a doctor because depending on the severity of your fissure, they may prescribe various forms of treatments. They may recommend suppositories like Calmo 4, Epsom salt baths, or other over-the-counter remedies. In worse off situations, a specialized compound cream can work wonders with a steroid to reduce inflammation. They may prescribe actual blood pressure medication to help relax the underlying muscle, and they may also prescribe a numbing gel to help mitigate any pain you're experiencing in the region. I just want to emphasize that most of the time you don't need to undergo those more extreme prescriptions. Uh, with most anal fissures, if you take the Kamal 4 suppository, you have the Epsom salt baths, and you just stop with any anal play for a week or so, it will heal on its own. And then at that point, you can finally start having anal sex and anal play again. Of course, this time, you're going to make sure to start slowly and use lube because you don't want to repeat yourself and get another anal fissure. All right, my name is Zachary Zane. Thank you so much for uh, watching this video and I'll see you guys next month.